Hey, it's Neil Parfit. How are you? This is just a quick update on my Mac Pro Rack integration adventure. So for the last week, I've been testing the bananas out of this thing. And the last two days especially, I've had it going through a hell session. And what that is, I've loaded up a ton of virtual instruments. We're talking hundreds of virtual instruments. I've had a session triggering all sorts of random MIDI crap and controller information. The system is on loop and it's at 350 BPM or something ridiculous. And I've just let that play. And the hope is it can survive the test without kernel panicking, without any of the supporting software crashing and success. Nothing's gone down, nothing's crashed, nothing's locked. Got back here, everything was playing, I was still getting sound, nothing was broken up. So the stability factor is 10 out of 10. And honestly, I wasn't surprised, but I always have to do this kind of due diligence when I'm testing systems. And here we are. The other critical test for me was how well does the system work going from two computers down to one? And I think I may have mentioned it before, but my secondary computer was running my entire orchestra. And the way that worked was MIDI over LAN was firing MIDI signals to that computer, and then audio was coming back through its own interface. Now I've taken that interface and put it in the same machine. Vienna Ensemble Pro is running behind Logic using separate hardware, and inner application MIDI is going from Logic to Vienna Ensemble Pro to make it all work. I was initially skeptical with like huge fingers crossed, but so far so good. Initially I was running into some audio glitches, but it turned out that all the threads were assigned to all the applications at the same time. So all I had to do was just lower the thread count usage in each app and that sort of made all those glitches go away. So it has been a week and so far I have no regrets switching to the system. Everything's working as it should. All the stuff that was on my kitchen table is pending sold, which also puts a big dent into the purchase of this. And onwards I go. So my system transition is almost 100% complete. There is, however, a few stragglers, mainly the uh, rack mount cabinet and a few pieces of Avid equipment that will consolidate about 8U of equipment down to 3U. I'll get into lots of detail with one more video going over the installation and setup of all that stuff, including the rack rails, the computer, and all the supporting peripherals going within that cabinet. So with that, I'll give you a quick peek of the system working in action. And just as a refresher, Vienna Ensemble Pro has its own audio hardware, Logic has its own audio hardware, and Pro Tools Ultimate also has its own hardware, and they're all talking and working simultaneously to get the workflow that I want. Let's take a look. So here we have Logic, and I have hundreds of tracks assigned to various instruments, everything from like every orchestra sound you could think of to uh, in this show, there's like a lot of like chip tune kind of sounds and synths, and they're all just loaded up sitting here. All the orchestra stuff, however, is in Vienna Ensemble Pro, which is sitting behind here. Each one of these is running a contact and each one of those is crammed full of 16 instruments in most cases. So there's a lot of stuff going on and I just wanted to show you this all working in action. Just a quick note that this isn't a workflow video. This is just a quick example of how all these things are working together at the same time. And for anybody not familiar with composing, songwriting or music production, the idea is you keep adding performances until you come up with a result that you like musically. It could be as simple as a vocalist and a guitar. Those are two separate layers in most cases. In television writing, sometimes there's 50 or 100 or 150 elements. They're not all playing at the same time usually, but you could think of it as like a big painter's palette. Like you have all these different sounds at your fingertips. Just to demonstrate this quickly, I have a section here that's four measures long that will loop and you'll see what I've done for this action scene right here. So again, these are all different layers that I've played in at one point in the past. So here's the bass. You can see my performance there. Here's the melodic stuff. So with this, I have an electronic underscore for this action scene here, but this is only half the puzzle in this demonstration. As I mentioned before, there's a software called Vienna Ensemble Pro hosting all the virtual instruments for my orchestra. And you might say, well, that's only 80 sounds because there's only 80 people in an orchestra in most cases. But because it's electronic, 
each one of these orchestral elements needs different kinds of performances. So it might be the percussionist switching from a drum to a cymbal, to a vibraphone, to an egg shaker, or it might be a violinist playing a long note versus a short note. All these different kinds of variations have to be set up. They're sitting there ready to go. And this is why it sometimes takes hundreds or even a thousand tracks to realize a fully fleshed out big orchestral score because you're not using all those sounds at the same time, but you never know when you're gonna need a specific type of performance to help realize your piece. Just as an example here, let's talk about choir. So I have this choir sound here. It's a female choir. What if I wanted a boys choir? That's a completely different sound. Or, like that's not something you can just play with a static sound that has notes. That's an actual recording of a choir doing that performance. So let's take a quick listen to the orchestral backing for that same piece I showed you before. And if we put it all together, it kind of goes like this. Of course, we'll never hear that last part because there's a huge explosion and sound effects always buries the music. But that's a story time note for another day. So that's it for today. Hopefully this sheds some light into what I'm up to. I will get into some specific workflow examples, but I'm just waiting until I have all the final pieces here and then I can switch gears and get into it. So hopefully there's still something to take away from all this. And uh, if you have any questions, drop me a line, drop me a comment. Speaking of comments, some person said I looked like a cross between Seth Rogen and a leprechaun. Thank you. Well, we're both from Canada. So I'll leave you with this. Why am I wearing this toque? I am in Canada, eh, and it is cold as balls here. See you later.